Hey, it's me, Laura, the creator of this podcast. Before the episode begins, I just wanted to thank our newest patron, Brian Fullerton. If you're interested in financially supporting us and getting a patron shout-out as well as bonus content, make sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash auroraeverlasting. Now, let's get to the episode. Aurora Everlasting August 10, 2552, 2010. And you're 100% shorter in this facility? No, of course not. It's more like 90, 80, maybe 70. It's a hunch, really. I mean, that's better than nothing. It is. So when you were in there... I couldn't find anything on Leo that would indicate they ever showed up in this facility, but they might not have been there yet when I was there. Because, you know... Because you glitched. Is that what you're calling it? I... Well, I haven't really had a reason to call it anything till now. I haven't talked to tons of people about the situation. Fair enough. So, your friend... Orson. Yes, Orson. I'm sure she'll be okay with you bringing me to her place. I don't want to intrude. Nonsense, Anna. They'd be happy to have you. They're probably going to be upset that I left them to fend for themselves, but yeah, I'm sure they'll be fine with you staying. Okay. I wish I knew how long I've been gone. I hope I didn't leave them hanging for like three months or something. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, when are we anyways? August. What is that? Why do you have... It's a locator I got from Ender 18. I forgot I still had it. I... From the colonies? Yes. It's porous, right? Oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. They are probably tracking us right now. If they... Wait. Nope. We're good. Are you sure? Uh, yep. This piece of chunk runs a far more advanced system than whatever porous is working with right now. How do you know that? You really want me to explain? Maybe later. Not without your abilities, but you're sure, right? No one's coming after us. As sure as I can be. Good. Wait, can this thing tell you the time? Can can the extremely advanced supercomputer on my wrist tell you the time? Margot, what do you think? Yes, yes, I think it can. And you're right. It's shortly after 8 p.m. Is that not what you wanted to know? The date? Oh, August the 10th. That's... Oh, that's half a year. Poor Orson. Oh, wait, I... it's year 2552? Jesus, no, that's... That, what? That's the... It's not supposed to be 52. But it is. That's the equivalent to 193 on board of our ship. You know, this year... I was stuck in 47. So, you've been gone for five years. Yeah. Orson? I don't think they're home. Maybe she relocated? Maybe. We Should we just break in? I guess. I guess I could reach the window if you give me a boost. Uh, sure. One, two, three. <gasps> Do I need a key or...? The door should just open. It, you can't really open it from the outside. At all. That doesn't seem... On my way. She probably moved. There's no way they... I shouldn't have let her come with me. If Porus got her, what if she's just dead? I... It'd be my fault. How... Jesus. Why is this so heavy? Don't complain, you're just weak. Saying this to the person who saved you from being shot like an hour ago? You fell on top of that guy. Advanced move. By accident. Nothing is ever accidental. What are you doing? You can't stop right in the doorway. Margot? They haven't been back here. Maybe they left? They haven't come back since we went to the facility. I, I forgot that flashlight in the morning before and all his stuff is here. I... Hey, maybe she just couldn't come back here. Why would she not? It's her home and now... 
What if she's dead? What if I dragged her into that place and the guard shot her? Margo. It, it's my fault. It's... Margo, stop. You said she agreed to go. You said you told her she didn't have to come with you. Yes. It's not your fault. She chose to come with you. I left her there. That was always a risk. You both knew you could disappear at any time. Listen, we're getting Leo out of that facility. They'll know more. Maybe they can help us get back to that point in time. Maybe she didn't come back here because we told her not to. Because we knew she wouldn't. Because we save her in the future. That doesn't make any sense, Anna. No, no, it does, I promise. We just need to get Leo, right? Right. Step number one. Research. Is that... Why is Evelyn's file so big? I think it has something to do with this. And or two? Why? We didn't even go there in the end. I think someone else might have. And it just so happens that I grabbed their files. Wow, that is... A lot, I know. It's at least a couple hours worth recordings, but the more we know... <sighs> right, now let's meet... Devon Chaps. April 3, 74, 9, 13. Report time, report time. I gotta record a report time. Rio. Oh. Hey, whoever is listening to this, just ignore the beginning, alright? This can stay between us, right? Say nothing if you're gonna keep quiet about this. Wow, thanks man, I owe you one. Okay, I get that this kind of sounded like I'm going insane, but let's just say I haven't gotten my weekly dose of space camaraderie. That made even less sense. It's... Humphrey has barricaded himself in his lab and Bennett is... He's not doing great. And not very talkative as a consequence. That's about it for the week. I could sign off right now. Devon checks out. <laughs> it's all been so weird since the woman showed up. It, it's been affecting everyone. It was gradual at first, but now it's obvious. Humphrey hasn't left his lab in days. I, I'm, I'm not even sure he is eaten. And Bennett is just constantly irritated, much more so than usual. I've been thinking that maybe, maybe he started drinking again. But I checked our stock and it's all still there, so it can't be. Maybe it's me. That's what I've been thinking. Maybe it's that I changed and they are both avoiding me because I'm acting off. I wouldn't blame them. I... I'm worried. If what she said is true, we are headed for our own doom. If Ender 2 is uninhabitable, we'll die there. But it wouldn't be in Porus interest, right? Sending us out here to die on a barren planet? Even without the human interest side of our story, it's a massive waste of materials, time, and I would like to believe talent as well. I really shouldn't be telling you this. After all, we know where this recording will end up. <laughs> Let's just hope I'll be dead already when they get it. April 17, 74, 1638. Dude, you wanna drag him out of there at gunpoint? Be my guest. It's not like I can stop you. Ah, oh, Bennett, why do you have to be so stupid? Why are you on? Did I turn it on before I... Lights on? Distribution underscore main underscore six six nine two not responding. Extra required. As long as the laptop is working, I'm not leaving. Okay, good. I thought I changed it. Let's do this in the dark then.
Devon Jack speaking. Our transmitter was down for most of last week. I finally got around to fixing it yesterday and guess what was broken when I checked the overnight data this morning. Yeah, the transmitter. So sorry aliens, I will not be sharing the nice 22nd century compositions I carefully picked. You'll have to wait another week. <sighs> Crew-wise there has been tension, to put it mildly. Humphrey hasn't been in his room, hasn't been in the kitchen, he hasn't left the lab. Not once. I originally wasn't going to disrespect his privacy like that, but I checked the cams. Nothing. The door to his lab didn't open once in the past three weeks. I, I thought he might be dead. But he's in there. I knocked on the door and... <sighs> While I absolutely love getting blinded every two seconds. Lights off. Lights off. <sighs> I guess it adds to the atmosphere. Whatever Humphrey's doing in the lab, it sounds like something straight out of a bad horror movie. I probably should have recorded it, but the lab... I don't know how to put this. It feels like it's off limits. It felt so wrong to be standing in front of the door. Like I was eavesdropping on a secret conversation and... Uh, I was eavesdropping on Humphrey. That's probably why. Bennett, however, doesn't seem to feel that. He screamed with Humphrey through the door for half an hour yesterday. He's fed up. And since he's the commanding officer on this craft, he does have a right to know what's going on, I suppose. He's just very harsh about it. I'm scared he might act in a way he'll regret. Especially now. No. Man, what the... April 18, 74, 9.02. Crew member GH3 is deceased. He passed away last night after being shot by XB2. We were not able to revive him as a recent power outage proved fatal for all of his clones. His clones only. Bennett, commanding officer Bennett, claims he acted in self-defense. <sighs> I can't believe I let this happen. Bennett shouldn't have gone into the lab alone. I should have reached out to Humphrey earlier, more often. How could I not realize that he... <laughs> Stop it. This isn't your fault. This isn't anyone's fault. April 21, 74, 541. It was all lies. But you know that already, don't you? Or else they won't let you listen to this. I hope you can live with yourself. Bennett told me everything. How you sent us here to die? Just another little experiment? Give us some arbitrary tasks, some useless hopes, and then use as a spade. I guess you could call this mission a success. Whatever you send us here to find, we've found it. And we're taking it right back to you. December 6, 2506, 938. Good morning, Dr. Devon. I'm glad to hear you've been doing much better. All right. As you can imagine, there is some confusion regarding what occurred on vessel WRC-42, especially what happened to your two crewmates. While your reports are helpful, of course, a proper conversation would be much more beneficial. Doctor, I believe you've been made aware of the deal you've been offered here. Good. 
According to your recordings, you encountered an unidentified woman on January 31st in the year 74 after takeoff. How did she get on your ship? Doctor. I don't know. Any theories? Assumptions? No. How about her identity? She seemed to know quite a bit about your mission. I don't know. You've got the recordings. We'd just love to hear about your personal experience. I... Doctor? I don't know. All right. In your progress report from April 18, you claim that Commander Bennett killed Dr. Humphrey during an altercation the day before. Could you go into some more detail? I wasn't there when it happened. But you've heard Bennett's explanation. He said that Humphrey attacked him, that he, he, he left him no choice. Bennett seemed terrified. I should have been with him. He shouldn't have to go in there alone. It was my job to... Why wouldn't you stop him then? If you considered it your job. I didn't know what had happened to Humphrey yet. I was scared. Why were you scared of him? I... Devin, why were you scared of him? I wasn't scared of him. I I was scared of what might happen if I didn't. If you did what? Can you elaborate on that? Okay. What happened to Commander Bennett? I don't know. Are you sure? Devin, you're not on trial. We just need this information to provide aid to others in the same situation. Why would anyone be in the same situation? Well, the incidents you were involved in were unprecedented. We never know when something... They weren't, though. I, I didn't get that. Could you please repeat yourself? They weren't unprecedented. You must be confused. No. You planned this. I wasn't involved in your mission, Devin. You're porous. All of you planned this, and we... <sighs> I think we've heard enough. Your cooperation was much appreciated, Devon. Unfortunately, it was not enough to earn you a reduced sentence. In spite of everything, it was a pleasure to meet you, Devon Jax. So, what does this mean for us? That we weren't the only Ender mission. Which makes sense, because Ender 18 is called um, Ender 18, so it's probably one of those as well. Yeah, exactly. And the same thing that happened to us also happened to these guys. Yeah. And the woman who landed on the ship could be the key to all of this. Maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe she's like us. It could even be Evelyn. You think? You don't? You remember that person I told you about, on the beach. A friend. Don't call them that. Sorry, but yeah, I remember. I think maybe they could be the source. They could also be the person who Jax is talking about. You're right. So if they showed up there, does it mean they were also hanging around our ship? Could they have killed you and Leo? But how am I alive then? How are any of us? You're gonna hate this answer. Hit me. Magic? All right, I hate that answer. But we don't have any other explanation, any... Someone is here. Orson, maybe? She wouldn't knock. You still have your gun? Yes. Take the recorder. If we get overrun, you destroy it. Open the door and hide behind it. You'll just... Okay. Three, two, one. Please don't shoot. Who are you? Uh, Dr. Eliza. Before us? 
Yes, I... Shut up. Give me one reason I shouldn't kill you right now. I can help you get to Leo Tournier. If Porus sends you, you'll be dead this If Porus finds me here, they'll do that for you. No worries. Come in. Are you going to keep a... Yeah. Oh, there's two of... Anna Kastner? Do you not know the meaning of the words shut up? Good. Do you know who this is? No, she doesn't seem familiar. You answer my questions, all right? Yes. How do you know where Leo Turnier is? I was responsible for them at the Porus facility not far from here. So they are there. Good. We got three out of four crew members then. How did you find us here? This is one of two settlements around here. I thought it would be empty, but you turned the light on. <sighs> we should have... Doesn't matter now. Does anyone know you're here? No, I... Porus and I aren't really on great terms right now. I was, um, exiled. Why? I promised Leo to get them out, and I got caught. Why would you do that? What we were doing isn't right. I couldn't do it anymore, but I... Well, I got caught and fired and exiled. I just want to help Leo get out. It's the least I can do to make things right, I guess. What do you say, Anna? We can use all the help we can get. Yes. But if you make one wrong move... You'll shoot me. And I'd rather not do that. I'll behave. Cool. Now I'm sure you can help us out with the... Aurora The Last Thing returns with its next episode on August 8th at 4pm Central European Summertime. It was created by Laura Reicher and is protected under Creative Commons 4.0 International License. This episode was produced by Elena Herzerbacher. It was written, directed and edited by Laura Reicher. The script was edited by Victoria Krenn and Sophie Erhardt. This episode featured Simon Thalame as Devin Jacks, Marie-Christine Heiling as Anna Kestner, Sophie Erhardt as Margit Nielsen as well as the disembodied voice, Marguerite Kenner as the interrogator and Mona Reicher as Eliza. If you want to help us out, show your support, tell a friend about this podcast. Or if you're feeling really crazy today, you can even tell two friends. You could also review a podcast wherever you like. The best way for us to gain new listeners is with your help. Because, let's be honest, our marketing budget is non-existent. If you're interested in bloopers, extra content, or you just want to financially support the podcast, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash auroraverlasting. And for some background infos, feel free to check out our social media. We're at aurora underscore everlast on Twitter and at aurora underscore everlasting underscore podcast on Instagram. Thank you for listening.